So you have to be able to hear in order to be able to see. And you To hear the Lord, you have to set your heart to hear. You must, number one, be inclined to hear. In other words, your relationship with the Lord is one where you have said whatever the Lord says, I am inclined to hear it and I am inclined to obey it. Do you know that if someone is saying something that you don't like, that you may not hear it? A person can say that, or a spouse can say something to you that you don't want to hear, so you simply don't hear it. And so the relationship with the Lord in yourself is one where, number one, you are inclined to hear. You know, you have set your heart that when I hear the Lord, I will obey. I will answer I will obey. So you must be inclined to hear and you must be willing that once you hear that you obey. So let's look at this story a little bit more. Let's go to verse uh, 12. And this is the widow's answer to Elijah. Verse 12. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I'm gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. And so, as I said, the woman, the widow, was downplaying everything that she had. She said, I got nothing. Why are you asking me? Why are you not asking a rich person? Why are you not asking somebody that's got more than what I got? I don't have a cake. I done told you. All I got is a little meal and a little oil. In other words, that's how you make a cake. But I'm going to make that cake for me and my son and die. Again, death. I, what I sense is... Is that she really she's got an issue with God and everything. It's just it's just a small adjustment, but it's it's just a, a little issue with God. Okay, she has a need, all right, and and she has been talking to the Lord, and the Lord has been talking to her. Now the the Lord had commanded her to sustain the man of God. That that word sustain means to maintain, to take care of, but it it also means to be able to. In other words, God enabled her to. By the word of the Lord, he enabled her to take care of the man of God. The, the, the grace of God was beginning to be poured out to her first in the gracious words of the Lord. So the, the word works this way. We walk by faith, not by sight. The just shall live by faith, not by what they see, not by sight, but by believing the word of the Lord. And so the grace to be poured out to us, we have to believe the word of the Lord, especially the voice of God, when God speaks to us. Okay, so the Lord speaks to us to show us what's in our heart. That's the mercy of God. God will speak to us to show us what's in our heart and how we respond to God shows whether we are holding on to what's in our heart or letting go of what's in our heart. Okay, remember, as sincere, as newborn babes, we have to desire the sincere milk of the word. We, we have to require the word, you know. So we have to have the attitude that the God is right. God is creator. God knows everything. God is right. He knows about my circumstances. You know, the Bible says that God knows what we have need of before we even ask. And so, but he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. Righteousness uh, is right standing with God, but it's also making right everything that is wrong, it's also God ways of doing things. When we are seeking, we are seeking God's ways of doing things, which means that we have to let go of our
our way of doing things. If we want God results, we have to receive God's ways. If we want the results of God, we have to receive it from the wisdom of God. And it's going to look like foolishness. It looked like foolishness in this situation. The Bible says, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 11, 15, uh, 13, 9, Revelation 2, 7. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. You have to be inclined to hear. That's Ears to hear is the capacity to hear. Okay. Did you know that God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble? And that's what we're talking about. God's grace being poured out to us. Answers to prayer. The goodness of God being seen today in the land of the living, not just when we get to heaven. And so you have to have ears to hear. Ears to hear means that you've made up your mind that when God speaks, that you will hear him and that you will obey and that whatever he says you will renew your mind by the word of God you will not be conformed to the dictates of this world but you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind you will exchange your thoughts for God's thoughts your ways for God's ways in doing so we will not be conforming to the ways of the world but we'll be transformed by renewing our minds. And so the Bible says, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. You say, well, everybody got ears, but everybody doesn't have ears to hear. You know, the word is going forth. The Bible says, has, uh, the, has people heard the, the sound? Yes, indeed, went out. But not everybody received it. The sound went out, but not everybody received it. The Bible talks about when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And that when he came up out of the water, the Bible says, God says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Some people heard it. Some people heard a sound. Some people said it sounded like thunder. Some people just knew that something went forth. They don't know exactly what it was. So they were not tuned into the voice of God. And so it is your heart which will help you to be in tune to the voice of God. We are talking about walking with God. And it is essential in these last days especially that we walk with God. And to walk with God, we will have to be able to hear His voice. And how many people know that God may say something that does not line up with our denomination or our tradition or our religion, but it will line up with the Word of God. Everything that God speaks lines up with the Word of God and gives context to the Word of God. Proper focus, proper um, uh, uh, illumination from the Word of God. When God speaks, it will line up with the Word of God and it will set the Word in order for you. You know, the Word is a collection of Old Testament and New Testament, but it is inspired of God it is breathed of God and so it will begin to be line upon line precept upon precept if you will hear God you cannot um, uh, be a partaker of the word if you say that I'm gonna line up with the word but you don't line up with the spirit on the word the Bible says the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life and so it's the word of God yes but it's going to be incongruent. It's not going to line up properly until the Lord begins to give you wisdom to line that word up properly. And to hear him, you may have to let go of some sort of tradition or, or something in your denomination or something that grandma has said or something that somebody else has said. That You know, you have to taste and see that the Lord is gracious. You have to taste and see that the Lord is good and gracious. That means you have to be a partaker. The Lord has set before you life and death. Choose life. The Lord has set before you a table in the presence of your enemy. Will you be a partaker of what the Lord has prepared? The Bible says wisdom has prepared 
her table. You know, wisdom sets everything up, prepares it for you to be a partaker thereof, to feed you your necessary food. And yet, you can be a person that will not receive, and then there's no use in you blaming God because you are not a receiver. You're not a partaker because your heart is not lining up. And so, the, the man of God told the, the widow to fix him a cake. Verse 13, he, he gets to the crux of the matter. He says to fear not. So we see that this is a part of what was holding her back. She was in fear. So the Lord speaks, I command you. I'm going to send a man of God. I want you to take care of him. She's in fear because of the circumstances. She's in drought. And so this is beautiful. The way that the Lord deals with both. So the Lord gives her a word that lines up with his original word. It is a confirmation of his original word unto her. It says, the, the man of God, verse 14 says, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of war fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and, it, and she and he and her house did eat many days. So the Lord gives her a word. Okay. She's in dire straits. She's hurting. You know, it's like so many of God's people. You know, we hurt. We desire. We need. Okay, so you, the Lord hears you. And he is speaking to you. But are you tuned in to what he's saying? So this is for us. I know this is for somebody. That we have hurt. We have despaired. We have a need. Okay? We need a prayer answered. We are desperate for the Lord. Good. The Bible says, They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. You are actually hungering and thirsting after something that is right. And God says, I know what things you have need of. He says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his, and his righteousness. And I'm going to add those things. I'm going to pour out some grace. But you're going to have to hear me. Because these circumstances are trying to speak to you very loudly. They are trying to lord over you. And Jesus is Lord. I cannot let you let circumstances be the Lord. But you're going to have to do what I say. You're going to have to be sensitive in your heart. And whatever's in your heart that doesn't line up with this word, you're going to have to let it go. So this is what the man of God is doing. He's doing what God has called men and women of God to do. He is strengthening that lady. He is helping her faith. He is helping her to be built up. He is not taking advantage of her. Many people say that men of God, women of God, even if they solicit an, an offering for the upkeep of the church and the ongoing of the ministry, that they are taking advantage of people. This man of God is doing exactly what God has called him to do. He is helping build up this lady to receive from God. The Lord has already spoken. And the word that the man of the God spoke, it is a confirmation of the word that God has spoken, you're going to sustain them, and I'm going to take care of you. You're going to sustain the man of God, and I'm going to take care of you. She did not argue with the man of whether or not that God had spoken or whether these things were true. When the Bible says God has commanded, it is the truth. You do not have to finagle the word God spoke to her and commanded her. The circumstances did not look like she could do what God had asked her to do. She needed grace. Grace is the ability to do what you cannot do in your own strength. She needed grace from God. The man of God came to help her in her faith. You know, so the emphasis, a lot of people put the emphasis on the man of God being sustained. Praise God the man of God was sustained. But look at this widow woman in need, trying to take care of a child by herself. She needed a touch. She needed an answer from God. And God was already moving, already speaking, already dealing. 
And so you have to be able to hear God in the midst of circumstances that look different. You got to know that God loves you. And you got to know that God cares. And you got to know that God not only has the answer, He is the answer. And that He wants to pour out His grace. So we have to align our hearts to hear from God. We have to lay down what we thought, even what we see. We have to be a person who is an alien to this world system, but that we are a, a, a citizen of heaven, a citizen of the kingdom of God. Our citizenship is in heaven. Our, we are only sojourners. We are only passing through here. This circumstances, these circumstances shall pass. They are subject to change. God wants us to reign and rule in life through one Christ Jesus. He wants to be Lord over these circumstances in your life. The Lord does care. He knows everything. He sees the end from the beginning. And now he's commanding. He's speaking. And so now her heart is aligning with the Lord. She did as the man of God commanded. And it was just as he said that the the oil did not give up give out and the meal did not give out until the drought ended so she sustained him and her household in other words she was blessed to be a blessing so she was a partaker of the blessing of God she was inclined she she got her heart in alignment that's how she got the blessing that's how she got the miracle she got her heart back aligned with God. She, she stopped having a problem with God. You know, when, a lot of times when we are in a hard place, you know, you could say that we are going through um, a wilderness experience, a tough time. Well, the Lord has to be the one to sustain us. But we got to keep our attitude right. We cannot murmur and complain. You know, the, the children of Israel, when God delivered them out of Egypt, that whole generation, except for Joshua and Caleb, continued to murmur and complain. And they did not enter into God's rest. They did not enter into what God intended. The, the, the works of God was completed before the foundation of the world. Their, their uh, part was... To set their heart to receive. And God took them by the way of the wilderness to show them what was in their heart. And also for them to um, align their heart correctly by worshiping him. The word of the Lord that Moses told the Pharaoh. Let me and my people go. Let God's people go that they may worship me. If their heart was upon the Lord instead of Egypt, the Bible clearly says that their heart was continually on Egypt. That Egypt was always in their heart. They never let Egypt go, so they did not receive the things of God. So that's what we're talking about. The things that you're holding on to is the world. And you are not letting it go, so you're not receiving the end that God intended from the beginning, which is righteousness. If you don't let it go, you will not receive the goodness of God, the grace of God. So that thing which you're holding on to, you have to let go to receive the things of God. And you have to get out of fear. The man of God told the widow of Zarephath to fear not. Do what you have said. In other words, I'm not interfering with your life. Do exactly what you said, but make me a cake first. This was not selfishness. Do you know what a tremendous adjustment she had to make in her heart to hear those words? Okay, you can do that. Make yourself a cake. Make your son a cake. But make me one first. Okay. Jesus said, blessed are they that are not offended by me. So when the word comes, we already know that those uh, who are offended are those that are offended by the word. The, when the word comes... You can be offended according to what's in your heart. You know, the, the word comes, you hold on to what's in your heart. So you are offended by the word and you hold on to the thing that is in your heart. And so that is grievous unto God. 
that is grievous unto the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of promise. He is here in the earth. The Holy Spirit is here to help you to receive your inheritance, to help you to hear from God. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But they are revealed unto them by the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches all things and things of God. The Holy Spirit was sent here in the earth to show man the things that are freely given unto him. So you must be born again and you must receive the Spirit. You must be filled with the Spirit. You must be baptized with the Spirit. Everything about the Holy Spirit, the gift of God, you must receive. You must not do it in measure. You know, as sincere as a newborn babe, you have to desire the sincere milk of the word. So the things of God, you have to want wholeheartedly. The Bible says you're supposed to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, all your intellect, everything that is within you, your whole heart. So you don't do uh, receive God piecemeal. You don't receive this part and that part. The Lord wants you to receive, but will you set your heart to receive? Set your heart that you may hear and obey. And so we are learning principles in the Word of God. These are individual principles that if you get that, then you can join into the body correctly and so that we can walk in the unity of the faith. And that the, you can see the men and women of God set by God to do what they're supposed to do. And that you can have an ear to hear and a heart that's sensitive unto God to, to hear the Lord and to receive of His grace and benefits. The Lord is not trying to decrease you. He's trying to increase you. The Lord, your God, will increase you more and more, both you and your seed. That's the word of the Lord. And so for that word to mean something to you, for it not to be cryptic, uh, unrelated, loose pieces of scripture snatched here and there with no cohesiveness, you must be able to hear the voice of the Lord as he deals with you personally. Then you'll be able to walk with the Lord. And so we are hearing in this story of the widow Seraph Zarephath, how someone heard the Lord and how they adjusted their heart to walk with God. Stop seeing things about um, money here, money there. What is God saying? God deals with money. Okay. God speaks about substance. The Bible says, honor the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruit of thine increase. So, so what the Lord spoke about increase or money or substance, don't harden your heart toward the Lord. Don't be that way. Uh, be in a position to hear God. Don't set up things in your heart. And, and, and this is very serious. There are certain things that people have already set up in their heart that even if the Lord spoke, they would not hear. There are, um, there are uh, stubborn things. There are rigid things that a person have said out of their mouth or placed in their heart. I'll never do this, and I'll never do that, and I'll never receive this, and I'll never receive that. Don't you know, dear child of God, that when you say things, and if it doesn't line up with the word, you have set yourself up not to hear from God. You have closed your ears. Your ears are dull. That no matter what the Lord says, you will never hear. It will sound like a sound or thunder. You will not tune into the sensitivity of exactly what the Lord has said because you have put certain things in your heart and you said, I will never do this. As a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word. Let that part of you be tender that you may grow thereby. Let that part be open unto God. That's not saying that you are immature. That's saying that part of you is tender before the Lord. There is a part of you that is always growing until Jesus comes back or you get to heaven. You're always growing. 
That part has to be tender. That part has to desire the Lord, desire the word. It has to be sincere. That word sincere is that part of Jesus. Jesus is the sincerity of the word. He is the sincere bread. It is that part that is pure and undefiled. It's for you. It is in the, the, the size and the portion that you need to receive in order to grow thereby. It, 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 uh, it enhances the relationship that you have as a mother with a newborn babe. It is the relationship between you and God being nurtured up in the Lord. You want to be nurtured up in the Lord. It is, it is a beautiful thing. It is a tender thing. But you have a part to play. Your heart has to be in the proper place to receive from God. Turn with me to Luke chapter 4. Luke in the New Testament. Chapter 4. Let's look at what Jesus said about this widow of Zarephath. Luke chapter 4, verse 24 and 25. Jesus said, and he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. Verse 26, But unto none of them was Elijah sent, except unto Sarepta in the city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. So Jesus said, No prophet is accepted in his uh, in his own country. And I tell you the truth that there was a lot of widows during this time of famine. Some of them probably uh, of great substance. But of none of them did God send his man, Elijah, except this widow that was hearing his voice, though it was hard. That was hearing his voice, though it did not seem to line up with the circumstance. That the prophet was not accepted, it's not accepted around those who are familiar with him. You know, it is, um, God raised me and my wife up to be apostles, to be the men and women of God, to speak a word that he gave us. And yet, if a person had known me before the Lord has called me, they said, that's, that's only Calvin, and that's only his wife, that's not the apostle of God. That's not the one that God has called. And so if they did not honor the prophet, then they would not receive the grace, the prophet's reward. They would not receive the mantle, that which is of the prophet, that which is covered under the mantle of the prophet. The Bible says it works this way, and these are the ways of God, that the, 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 the grace that is on a ministry, that when you communicate with that ministry, you are a partaker of that grace. That's why the Bible says, don't muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. In other words, that ox is doing a good service. He's treading out the corn. So don't try to keep that ox from eating of the corn. And so that a person who communicates, that's who gives to, who prays for a, a ministry, is a partaker of the grace that is on that ministry, that is in the Word of God. That's a principle of the Word. And so your attitude toward men and women of God have to be right. You know, the Bible says they are all ministers whom God has given to each person. The Apostle Paul says that the, the ministers of God, God has given to each person. There's not a person who is set in the body of Christ who is set that says, I don't have a minister. Seek the Lord. Who is your minister? Who is your pastor? Who do you supposed to receive from? When you receive from him, then communicate with him. It is a, a dialogue. It is an open exchange. Okay. It is not one being taken advantage of. In fact, the Bible says that the, the, the blessing is greater. If you communicate and you receive the blessing, the blessing is greater than what you gave. The blessing 
is always greater than what you gave, than what you communicate. So you have to get rid of harsh attitudes toward God's men and women. The Bible says that God has a minister for you. If there's a minister that you don't like that doesn't line up, maybe he's not the one for you. But seek the Lord because he says he has one for you. And they are set in the body by Jesus Christ. And so we are learning some keys of how to walk with God in the story of the widow of Zarephath. And we see that it lines up with the word of God. And so you have to search your heart. You know, when the word comes, the word is sets before you life and death. You have to choose the life that's, that's in the word. You have to get rid of what you're holding on and to receive the life, the sincere milk of that word. What is that portion that Jesus has prepared for you so that you can grow uh, thereby? And so that... This, this word of God, Jesus says that a prophet is not accepted in his own country, amongst his own people. The Bible talks about how Jesus, when he went to his hometown, he couldn't do many mighty deeds, even though he was anointed to do so, because the people saw him as Joseph's son, the, the, the carpenter's son. You know, you have to esteem the anointing. You have to esteem the gift. Jesus says, if you didn't believe, you should have believed at least because of the works. In other words, God, the anointing that God places on his men and women of God, produces the, the harvest of God, the fruit of God. You shall know them by the fruit, the fruits of righteousness, the works of God, signs, wonders, miracles, salvations, healings. Those things are associated as fruit of God from the, the men and women of God that God has called. And Jesus said, you should have been able to see the works that I do. Because the works that I do is my, not my works, but those of the Father who sent me. The signature of God is seen when a person is healed. The signature of God is seen when a person is delivered. A, 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 the signature of God is seen when a person is saved, a person is set free. That's the signature of God. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. The, 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 these signs follow. They back up the word of God, you know, in the life of the believer. So the, the prophet is, is not accepted around those that are familiar uh, to him. But if you will honor the gift, be a person that spend time with the Lord so that you are used to the presence of God, so that you are used to the anointing of God, so that you are used to, when, when the presence of God comes or the anointing of God, you say, I know that to be the presence of God. I know that to be the anointing of God. I know that to be of God so that when a man or woman speaks that you can recognize that same anointing that, that same presence, that same witness, you know, you are trying the Spirit by the Spirit. So I hope um, this message has been a blessing unto you.